Well, hello everybody. Um, welcome to Maestro BPM Studio. Today we're going to be talking about dynamics. Um, so dynamics in terms of the amplitude of a signal. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about the concepts of distortion, saturation and compression. But not time-based compression as you might usually think of for uh, a compressor. Um, with attack, decay, sustain and release features of the compressor's envelope. But we will be looking at the use of a compressor and how it relates to dynamics uh, in a slightly more simple situation. Um, today I'm going to be using a simple one kilohertz test tone through a series of different devices here in the studio. Uh, I'm gonna read them off my list on the board up here. Um, so I've got my tube tracker mixer. So I'm going to use a channel strip out of that to demonstrate the effect of um, uh, tube saturation and associated distortion. Um, my Otari uh, MX5050 Mark III-8 uh, tape machine. And we're going to play a one kilohertz test tone through that and show you tape saturation. Um, I've got a Boss uh, MT2 effects pedal. I'm going to show you what good old fashioned solid state distortion does. Um, and I've got um, solid state logic UC1 and the associated bus compressor uh, plugin, which we're also going to use to demonstrate the effect of a compressor on a one kilohertz tone. And then finally, we're going to look at digital distortion. So what happens when I push uh, a high level signal into my Arturia 8 Pre interface. Um, so for each one of these, I'm going to give you a little bit of an explanation of how I've set up the testing um, and, and some observations of what I see, um, what we can both see as we look at the test tones, listen to the test tones as well as look at them on both an oscilloscope as well as on an FFT analyzer. Okay, first thing I just want to clarify is that we're only talking about analog dynamics and compression. Um, we're not talking about the compression of audio data of a, uh, a recorded WAV file. We're only talking about analog compression. Um, and we're also going to talk a little bit about noise because when we do talk about dynamics, it is useful to think about uh, noise and signal to noise ratio and that is the difference between the highest level of the audio that you can achieve through your signal chain all the way down to the point where noise starts to be audible um, and can be compared to the level of your signal. The difference between those two things is dynamic range. So we're going to see a little bit of noise in the signal as we look at different sources. Um, so it can't hurt just to have a little talk about what we're actually seeing there because some of it's pretty interesting. Now, the first thing we're going to do is just look at the uh, initial signal that I'm using to do all my testing. So it's a one kilohertz test tone. I've done a little bit of a dodgy. Uh, I've recorded um, one kilohertz test tone out of Logic um, and recorded it as a WAV file. And then what I've done is I've um, used some volume automation just to change the levels a little bit over time so that we can see the effects of distortion, saturation and compression over time. So the one kilohertz tone ramps up pretty quickly um, to effectively the equivalent of uh, minus six to a reference point and then it slowly increases from minus six dB up to the zero dB reference point. Um, that zero dB reference points is roughly minus 12 uh, dB FS or dB full scale. Um, which is roughly the level at which um, my, my system will start to overload at 0 dB FS full scale. So I've generally got my system set where within a certain, um, give me a certain small amount of headroom before I start to hit digital distortion. Um, and as we see each component of the system, you'll see how close we get to it. Uh, okay, so first what we'll do is we'll just have a little um, listen to and a look at the um, the pure 1K um, sine tone that we're using as our reference. Now the reason that I ramp it up quickly is just to get 
let's establish some um, some tone and then gradually increase it because I want you to be able to see what happens as the circuits slowly go into distortion. And in the first instance, um, I've got that one kilohertz test tone is being output, so um, is being routed out of logic, out into my Arturia Pre-8 interface, and then straight back in again at Unity game. So there's no difference in the level that's coming out of the interface and it's going back in again. So the two signals are effectively identical. So I've got a recording of the, uh, not the original tone recorded out of Logic, but the tone that's been sent through my Arturia interface and back into itself. All right, let's go over the action replay. Here we can see that 1K tone increasing. This is on slow-mo. Um, and as it increases, this is the first sort of fast ramp up of the 1K tone. You can see a whole bunch of weird artifacty kind of things happening either side of that 1K peak there on the FFT analyzer. So it seems as though somewhere in the uh, automation of the level in Logic is introducing all these kind of weird, funny little artifacts uh, most evident as it is being quickly raised up to uh, 0.8 of a full scale level. And here we go, it's just dropped off a bit, those funny artifacts. They're still there, and this is now as it is slowly ramping up from 0.8 to 100% uh, of uh, full scale. And you can also then see artifacts just popping up there. Sorry. Um, um, uh, harmonics popping up there. We've got 2k harmonic and we've also got 3k harmonic. Here we go. Here's the sine wave. Okay, here we go. It's slowly ramping up and you can see reasonably strong. They're down by about 30 dB. Um, oh, there you can go. You can see that those artifacts dropping off again. You can see the uh, harmonics there about 30 dB down at 2k and 3k. So we've got odd and even harmonics. Right, the next setup that we've got is that one kilohertz test tone being patched uh, out of the Arturia interface and into my tube tracker mixer, analog mixer. And this is a valve based mixer. And the way that I have set up the gain structure within the mixer and then subsequently back into um, the digital realm is that I've got the gain staging set up on my mixer so that um, when I have got the fader at uh, 0 dB and the input gain at, an, at a nominal level of let's call it 0 dB as a reference um, it, I'm at unity gain into the mixer and out of the mixer um, and that there is the valves are not being driven to the point of um, of distortion or saturation of the valves themselves so what I have done then is I've pushed up the uh, fader on my mixer, which means that then the gain stage into the valves has been increased by 6 dB. And so what that means is that as the um, 1 kilohertz test tone starts to ramp up, you'll see that we maintain a fairly consistent um, 1 kilohertz sine wave, and then it slowly starts to increase the saturation of the valve, and therefore the distortion of the signal. Uh, it's an interesting concept here because we're talking about saturating the valve and in fact the concept of saturation applies equally to solid state valve and tape in in my opinion because we're saturating the point at which the signal is passing through whether it's the um the pnp or npn junction of a transistor whether it's the plates of a, of a, a valve or whether it's the um the the flux density of particles on a tape let's watch what happens when we push that one kilohertz signal through a single channel of my valve mixer. No, 
right, once again we go back to the action replay. Here we can see that sine wave slowly forming there on the oscilloscope on the left. The FFT analyzer on the right, we can see that same artifacting just either side of the 1K peak. We can see a hell of a lot of harmonics appearing there. Uh, second and third order harmonics, or old and even harmonics. Um, and they're pretty consistent, you know, and there's only like probably 15, 16 dB down from the main peak of that 1K tone. Well, let's just keep an eye on the oscilloscope now on the left hand side. Wait for the waveform to start to distort as the valve starts to get into it. So we can start to see a little bit of shape there coming through. A little bit of clipping across the top, very clear now, clipping across the top. And interesting to see how it's sort of, it's not a straight hard clip, it sort of ramps slightly uh, as it gets to the extents. And then you can see on the right hand side those harmonics now showing very, very strong in the um, even order harmonics. Uh, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Uh, and the clipping there again on the left hand side uh, as plain as day. This really is a magical moment. Now similarly to my valve mix I've also got my tape machine set up so that I can push through a signal at unity gain at sort of nominal levels as set up on the um, various um, stages of my signal chain. Um, but then if I increase the input to the tape machine beyond nominal zero dB or unity gain, that is the point at when it starts to saturate the tape. So again, in this instance, you'll see the increase of the uh, one kilohertz signal up to a certain reference point, which is roughly zero dB input to the um, uh, of level onto the tape. And you should see very little or no saturation, therefore distortion of the signal on the tape, and then slowly increasing. And you'll see the effects of that increased input signal onto the tape as the tape starts to saturate, I, the magnetic particles on the tape start to get to the point where there's no more particles to polarize with the signal um, you'll then see what happens with that kind of um, distortion um, the effect is that the signal does get compressed um, let's see what it looks like Again, back to an action replay, uh, just the FFT analyzer starting off there. You can see, I just want to point out there, we can see very low level 1K signal, and that's actually um, a previous recording on an adjacent track on the machine, um, on the tape machine. So here we go, 1K signal. Here we can see, before we even get into distortion, very, very clear second order or even order harmonics. And we can start to see the waveform starting to distort, but it's not clipping hard. It's very nice and smoothed out across the top. Uh, very, very interesting to see that. So it's now definitely at the extents of the saturation of the tape. There's no more signal getting in there. That's at about 0.8 of full scale, but you can see how it's rounding off. And then very clearly on the right hand side, you can see um, the harmonics there, very definitely even order harmonics. I also like to point out that that noise floor has risen significantly. You can see that the signal to noise of that 1K tone is really only in the order of about 25, 30 dB. Very, very disappointing. Right, now the next uh, device that we're going to be pushing this signal through is the Mighty Boss MT-2. Now, I read an article a little while ago about how some um, 5G type conspiracy theorists um, had uh, posted the schematic diagrams on the internet for uh, the 5G um, 5G chips that were being used in the COVID-19 vaccines and it turned out to be the schematic diagrams of, uh, of a different um, boss effects pedal so I rushed out and bought one online immediately obviously um, this is a different pedal but effectively the same kind of thing um, a, a, a floor um, effects pedal distortion pedal 
Um, so the, again, same kind of setup here, outputting from my Arturia 8, uh, Pre-8 interface, 8 Pre interface, um, into the effects pedal and back in. With this, I'm going to also include a couple of um, dual traces just to see a bit of a comparison of some things because um, there's some pretty interesting things to note um, between the different um, states of the um, the pedal being on or off, the signals coming in and out of it. I'm also going to keep um, have show you some um, still shots uh, of triggered of the triggered oscilloscope, just so that you can actually see the the, the wave shape um, as captured in a triggered event, as opposed to just sort of rolling live on screen. It's a little bit easier to see the details of that distortion. I'm also going to show that um, pedal in three states: one, the pedal off. The second with the pedal on but with low distortion and then the third is the pedal on but with the distortion turned up. Not quite to high but it's up pretty high. Pedal off, pedal off, pedal off. Somebody hit the pedal, BOOM! Look at that noise. Look at that noise through the roof. Oh, look at that waveform. Bizarro. Ooh, quite bizarro. Now I love watching this. Look at that noise floor. The two comparisons there of um, no signal and signal through the pedal. And then watch it, boom, there it goes. There it goes. Look at all of that noise. Just want to make the point that I have made a mistake. Saturation in the pedal is not at the silicon junction. Is basically because we're trying to amplify more than the power rails will allow. Next, we're going to be looking at the same 1 kilohertz test tone, but through the solid state logic UC1. Uh, well, it's not through the UC1. The UC1 is just a, uh, a USB control interface. There's no audio going through it, um, but I'm going to be routing the signal via the uh, solid state logic uh, native bus compressor version 2, I think it's version 2, and using my solid state logic UC1 controller just to control uh, the levels. Now, um, th this will be interesting to see because here, as I, I said, we weren't going to be looking at time-based compression, but this is effectively a time-based compressor, but the signal is only changing very gradually. So you'll see the effect of the compressor kicking in, but you won't see it acting in the normal way that you would think about the compressor working with its attack, decay, sustain, release, etc. You'll just see it attacking the signal, so to speak. Um, now, this is kind of an interesting thing to observe. First of all, we're only working in the digital domain on an analog signal, so to speak. Um, but it's an interesting point of comparison because, in my opinion, this is a form of distortion that we're seeing to the signal. It's just that the effects of that distortion are not so obvious to us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a dual trace on this for both the um, the oscilloscope and the, and the FFT analyzer just so that you can kind of get a sense of what it is that I'm talking about. It is, it is distortion in, in my opinion um, but I'm sure there'll be people that'll disagree. Action replay time again. We've got the uh, plug-in window down there on the left-hand side. You can see the level, uh, the compressor. Uh, you can see the gain reduction kicking in. Uh, the red trace is the original signal. The, the green trace is uh, the compressed signal. On the oscilloscope, you can clearly see that we're getting a good uh, 6 dB or so of gain reduction. Um, and then also you can see some slight 
amount of um, harmonics uh, coming through that compressor. So that's obviously um, an emulation of the, art of, um, the uh, harmonics that you'd get through um, the SSL compressor. Really, really fascinating stuff. Great, fantastic. And I'll make a note, this is not really a distortion of the waveform, right? The waveform is staying true to itself. It's still got this same shape. It's just lower in level. So, you know, maybe I'm being a bit rough by saying compression is a form of distortion. All right, finally what we're going to do is that we are going to run the same one kilohertz test tone uh, hard into my Arturia interface. So this is where we're getting some digital compression by overloading the input to the Arturia interface. Um, it's nasty. Um, it's something that's very, very, very obvious to hear, especially because um, I'm hearing it a lot in my setup because I'm running a lot of signals out of my um, mixer and out of my tape machine very, very, very close um, to um, zero dBFS or the point at which the uh, signal chain in the digital domain on my computer and all the interfaces is getting to distortion. So I hear it quite a lot. Um, it's it's brutal. It's harsh to listen to. Um, and for one kilohertz test tone, you'll see that it's uh, you know it's not that much worse than um, the Boss distortion pedal. It's pretty bad though. Now that is actually absolutely worth a little bit of action replay. Um, this is the most horrendous sound, so I do apologize for your hearing having been damaged by that. Uh, the 1K tone, beautiful, no problem whatsoever. I'll just point out that what's actually happening here is that we are lo overloading the input into the 8 pre. So it's not necessarily, it's not actually digital distortion, but we are basically driving the input stage of the interface harder than it's supposed to be. Look at that, second and third order, but definitely stronger third or uh, sorry, second or even order harmonics. Um, amazing, but horrible sound. Not supposed to be used like that. Well, how beautiful was all of that? Stunning, amazing. Um, hope you've enjoyed this little journey through the idea of dynamics. Um, and you know, within the context of understanding what dynamic range means, um, and then also understanding less so the lower end of dynamic range where we hit to noise, but we have looked a little bit at noise, uh, more so at the upper end of dynamic range. What happens when we get to the point where a signal chain will no longer amplify? What happens to the signal at that point? How quickly, how harsh does that get implemented? And then also what are the outcomes and the artifacts of hitting that point at the top of your dynamic range. Whether you want to call it saturation, compression, or um, um, distortion, again, in my mind, these whole things are sort of like, bl the, the lines between them are all a little bit blurry because uh, a, 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 an, an analog signal um, going through um, a, a, a solid state junction or onto a tape, um, or um, what was my third bit? Valve. Um, we're just going through three of those things. It's effectively the same thing is happening, um, that the level is being uh, limited to a certain point. It's just what happens when you approach that point is the thing that's different between the three of them. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. hope you're enjoying the channel. Um, and who knows what's going to happen next.